morning. This is Magistrate Poselli. I've just let in a new participant. If you can please state your appearance for the record after unmuting yourself. Yes, good morning, uh, Magistrate Poselli. This is Attorney Daryl Carr here on behalf of the defendant, Dove Rappaport et al. Thank you very much. Um, I don't have any appearance yet from Plaintiff's Counsel. Have you reached an agreement regarding the motion? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, oh. We tried, but we've got no response. Okay. Well, we're still one minute early, so let's give him, uh, him or her, a minute to appear, and then if they still haven't appeared at ten o'clock, I'll place a phone call to their office. I am going to rename you on my screen just because I see your email address instead of your full name. And we are live streaming to YouTube just to make you aware of that if you haven't seen the the little red icon there on the screen. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, well, we're supposed to be maintaining public access to the courts, even though we're conducting proceedings remotely. So they provided us uh, these live streaming accounts. So I'm following instructions and we're live streaming the civil cases, but not not guardianship and things of that nature. All right, good morning. This is Magistrate Poselli. I've just let in a new participant. If you can please state your appearance for the record after unmuting yourself. Hi, uh, good morning, Your Honor. I'm Stephen Meyer here for the plaintiffs in the case of Miss and Ben David et al. versus Dove Rappaport et al. All right. Well, I think we have everyone to get started now. We're here for 18 CA 5460 Ben David versus Rappaport on plaintiff's motion for extension of time to respond to request for production filed on April 9, 2021. The order of referral was May 24th, 2021. I'd like to get a restatement of appearance for the defense counsels now that everybody's present. Attorney Darrell Carr on behalf of Dove Rappaport and 924 Del Prado and Diplomat Parkway. Thank you. So that's all the defendants then, I believe, right? I believe Mr. Rappaport is no longer uh, a defendant in the matter. I believe it's just now 924 Del Prado and Diplomat Parkway are current defendants. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. I don't have a court reporter right now. Is anybody expecting one? No, no, Your Honor. No. All right. We have electronic court reporting recording the proceedings, and that will be the official record of our proceeding. I'll turn it over to plaintiff's counsel for argument. Uh, sure. We had uh, received the request for production from uh, Mr. Carr's office, asked for additional time. Uh, I have, I believe, all of the documents, just going through them, and I'd like to uh, apologize for the delay. We'll probably be able to produce everything in a bait-stamped fashion by no later than Monday. Um, some of the documents came from Israel. The clients are in Israel, and uh, so uh, not only is it a little difficult to set up a time to speak with them sometimes, but also uh, there was a uh, a pretty lengthy delay in them sending me some stuff. Um, but, uh, and I also had to contact their former corporate counsel. Most of these, the documents requested are corporate records, some of which go back more than 10 years. And I did contact the corporate counsel, uh, Mr. Bruder in Naples to see what he had uh, to supplement what we had. Uh, anyway, we have quite a pile of stuff. I just uh, put it in uh, in order. Was hoping to have it produced earlier this week, but had it ran into some unforeseen other issues. So we can have everything produced no later than Monday. All right. Response or opposition, Mr. Carr? Well, Your Honor, just to, as a matter of note, uh, this motion was actually filed back on uh, 4 9, asking for an extension of time uh, from the 4 10 due date. Uh, that would have made the uh, materials due uh, 5 10 did reach out to Mr. Myers on 4-9 uh, saying I would actually stipulate this motion and entered an order. I got no response to that. I'm now sitting here uh, 60, almost 90 days post the time that I filed this, 60 days over, 30 days over, or more than 30 days over the time he actually asked for. So uh, if the court would uh, wants to grant his motion, but give him until Monday, uh, that'd be fine. But like to have these documents given the extended delay, no excuses and no responses. Okay, and just to be clear, we're talking about both the written responses and the responsive documents that you'll be providing by Monday, June 7th, Mr. Meyer? Yes, Your Honor. So uh, we have quite a number of documents. I'm just getting them in the proper order and making sure they're bait stamped properly. Okay, and are you expecting to have any privilege issues? Like no. privilege log that's gonna be filed with it as well? No. 
All right. So I will, I do know that the motion initially asked for 30 days. So we're, we're past the 30 days, but I'm going to go ahead and recommend granting the motion and allow until Monday, June 7th, 2021 for the plaintiff to serve their responsive document, the response as well as the responsive documents to Mr. Carr. Um, then I think that was the only thing that was really requested in the motion. Was there anything else you wanted me to address today, Mr. Meyer? No, Your Honor. Mr. Carr? No, ma'am. Well, so Mr. Meyer, this was your motion for additional time. So I need you to send in a report and recommendation that sets forth my findings that grants the extension to the June 7th date. And then um, that clarifying that it includes the written response as well as the responsive documents. And then uh, there is a 10 day exception period that applies unless waived. Do you want to preserve it or waive it, Mr. Carr? I'd waive, Your Honor. Mr. Meyer? We'll waive it. Thank you. All right, so I'll note that that's waived in that event. I probably won't reach, I probably won't need to make any revisions as long as y'all can reach an agreement as to the wording of the report and recommendation. There's a template for that. I don't know, Mr. Meyer, if you're familiar with where that is on the 20th Circuit's website, but there is a magistrate downloads webpage where you can get the template to use. And it also has instructions on how to submit that to my office, either by email with a word attachment or through the portal as a proposed report. Okay, I'll, I'll find it, Your Honor. I'm not, wasn't aware of it. Thank you for telling me. I'll um, uh, prepare it and send it to Mr. Carr uh, this afternoon to review. Okay, great. Yeah, if you Google magistrate downloads 20th Circuit, it'll pop up. Um, as though usually the first result. So I hope okay. you'll have a wonderful day. Thank you very much for calling in and logging in and you're welcome to leave the meeting. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. <clears throat> okay, well, we are now ahead of schedule. So I'm gonna turn off my video. If you wanna turn That's off your good. video, I'm gonna leave it, leave the thing going and then I'll just come back to the 10.15, okay? Okay.
<laughs> right. Mr. Rasso, are you there? Okay. You ready? All right. I am. I am. Thanks. Good morning. This is Magistrate Porcelli. I've just let in two participants, although it looks like somebody is not in their chair. So maybe we should wait another minute uh, for them to arrive. Good morning, Your Honor. How are you? I am doing well. How are you? Thank you. Are you are you here for the 1015 Trudeau versus Family Security? Yes, Your Honor. I represent the plaintiff, Richard Trudeau. Thank you. My name is Sarah Planchards. Thank you. I'll have you restate it again once we have everyone here. Okay. I see we have a D. Hickson. I'm not sure if that is counsel for the defense. I believe so. Yeah, okay. Because Mr. Lavey signed a pleading, but I know there's multiple attorneys over at that office. Yes, I, I spoke with Ms. Hickson yesterday. I don't want to confirm for her, but um, assuming she was a person I spoke with. <laughs> gotcha. Well, I have 10.15 on my clock. Um, oh, I am here. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but I don't see you. And I cannot hear you. Uh, see or hear you. Our seat is empty. Well, I'm not sure what to do. I mean, she's connected. I don't understand where she's coming from. Maybe she's just off screen. She said she's going to try again, I think, Judge. Yeah, yeah I don't know if she's going to no. like, even come back. <laughs> oh, remote desktop. Gotcha. Okay. You can also call in by telephone. I know that there is an issue with remote desktop and audio visual that we encountered earlier in the pandemic. If it's a remote desktop in the system where I have it set up, the audio and visual apply to the computer at that's um, being remoted in. So she won't be able to hear or I, see us on her uh, remote desktop. Yeah, I, I've i never tried to appear through a remote desktop, but I could imagine that that would be problematic. I see a phone number in the waiting room now. Okay. Good morning, this is Magistrate Poselli. I have, oh, I let in a new participant. If you can, you're muted though. If you have to unmute yourself. There we go. Can oh, you hear me? I can hear you now. Thank you. <laughs> can you state your name for the record, please? Yes, Your Honor. This is Danielle Hickson with Vernus and Bowling, representing the Defendant Family Security Insurance Company. All right. So let me change your name on my screen so that I see your name instead of your phone number. And that's D-A-N-I-E-L-L-E-H-I-X-O-N? That's correct. Your Honor. Right. Okay. So we're here in 21 CA 1821 Trudeau versus Family Security Insurance Company. If I could also get appearance from counsel for the plaintiff. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Sarah Planchart and I represent the plaintiff, Richard Trudeau. I did want to point out that this is being live streamed to YouTube in order to maintain public access to the court. So please keep that in mind. We're here on, and I don't see a court reporter. So I, uh, we have electronic court reporting recording the proceeding and that will be the official record of our proceeding today. 
Uh, we're here on defendant's amended motion for protective order filed on May 7th, as well as defendant's amended motion to determine sequence of depositions filed on May 7th. The order of referral was June 1st, 2021. I'll turn it over to defense counsel for argument. Yes, Your Honor. Actually, um, plaintiff's counsel and defense counsel were able to come to an agreement on some of the issues. Um, we were able to agree that um, the depositions will be scheduled late, no later than the end of November. The only outstanding issue at this point is whether the plaintiff's deposition will be taken first or the corporate representative. Okay. Do you want to make your argument on that point? Yes, Your Honor. Um, it is defense counsel's point of view that it would be in the interest of judicial economy if we were able to take the plaintiff's deposition first. The plaintiff filed the lawsuit. We don't know what all the evidence the plaintiff has is at this point. Um, so we don't know how to respond to that evidence. It is the plaintiff's burden. Um, and the plaintiff has firsthand knowledge of the claim. So in order for us to completely respond and facilitate a quick resolution to the claim, we need to know exactly what plaintiff's argument is going to be so that we can prepare um, effective defenses to the claim. Okay, response? Yes, Your Honor. And I, before it's, um, I go into my argument, I did want to point out a few things that were laid out in defenses, motions were in our response. Um, we did file on March 19th a complaint, and we did include a request for the, the deposition of the corporate representative. There was no date on there, but it, it did include the areas of inquiry and request for documents. Um, normally, uh, uh, plaintiff's counsel would do that, so that way defense counsel can um, uh, hire their corporate representative um, in that aspect. So... We, um, on March 19th, the complaint was um, uh, served along with that request. And um, plaintiff's counsel did follow up on those requests on, with letters on April 19th, May 1st, and May 7th, requesting the deposition of defendant's corporate representative. If I, don't, I believe it wasn't until May 25th um, give or take, uh, that plain, a defense counsel first requested the plaintiff's deposition um, in this aspect. Uh, defense counsel has also filed their answer in affirmative defenses, and you know, the parties are in the process of uh, responding and filing written discovery. Given that, Your Honor, um, and the date that we will be, uh, we've agreed to uh, late no, uh, no later than November to file the discovery, um, Plaintiff believes that defense counsel or defendant will have ample time to review the claims file as well as the discovery prior to any deposition. Additionally, um, there have been, uh, in our response that were filed, uh, the normal procedure for requesting uh, depositions and discovery as far as the sequence goes is that first in time to request has the first in right. Um, so plaintiff's position is that since we not only first requested um, the deposition of defendant's corporate representative um, on March 19th, May 1st, and May 7th, um, plaintiff uh, is requesting that the deposition of defendant's corporate representative uh, take place first, and then um, the plaintiff's depositions. Okay, thank you. Any rebuttal, Ms. Hickson? Um, I would only say I have no issue with uh, the plaintiffs and corporate representatives depositions being done within a few days of each other. However, I would still request that we are able to take the plaintiff's deposition first. As I'm sure your honor is aware, sometimes information comes out in those depositions that isn't forthcoming in discovery requests. And so we would be at an unfair advantage, um, not knowing everything that the plaintiff knows about the claim as we of course did not we weren't there when the incident occurred we don't know exactly what happened so we're going based off of any documents we received from the plaintiffs okay thank you i did have a couple of clarifying questions uh before i make some findings so the the one motion about the determine the sequence of depositions references on mike mccurdy can you just tell me who this person is or his role so that i understand who we're talking about 
I believe Mike McCurdy is the um, field adjuster, Your Honor. If, if I may clarify, Mike McCurdy is the claims adjuster who made the claims determination. Oh, the claims Thank you. Claims adjuster? Yes. If I may also point out, um, plaintiff did request other depositions that have been agreed upon already, um, including the field adjuster um, that already has been scheduled um, for, I believe, uh, mid-October. Okay, so I had been advised at the beginning of the hearing today that there was an agreement regarding scheduling depositions by the end of November. I just want to be clear that is both the corporate representative, Mr. McCurdy, and the plaintiff. Is that right, Ms. Hickson? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and you agree with that, Ms. Blanchard? That's an accurate representation? Yes, Your Honor. Um, plaintiff plaintiff has no issue, as, like, as, as defense counsel stated, in scheduling the depositions close to each other. Okay. So as to the sequencing issue, uh, the way I generally rule on this issue is I know that the plaintiffs want me to look to the notice that they file with the complaint. I tend to disregard that notice filed with the complaint. I don't think it really adds anything. Um, and it doesn't, you know, it just, um, it's not a, a practical basis for determining who should go first. Uh, I note that the defendant here on March 30th, filed the initial motion to determine sequence, motion for protective order, notice of appearance. So, and then there was a later amended motion for those things at back and on May 7th. So it looks like the defendant did promptly respond and promptly raise the issue, requesting that the plaintiff's deposition goes first. That is one of the factors that I consider. If a defendant is sitting around and not responding for months and months and months, you know, in those circumstances, I think that that uh, weighs in favor of the plaintiff being able to take the deposition of the defendant first. But when the defendant does, and that is also when the defendant doesn't raise the issue of wanting the plaintiff's deposition first. Here, we have the defendant who very promptly raises this issue, requests the plaintiff's deposition, go before the defendant's deposition. Uh, I do think in the interest of judicial economy, it does make sense to have the plaintiff go first and then the defendant absent those types of facts that don't appear to be present here um, because that allows the the claims to be explored during the deposition prior to taking the corporate representative of the defendant and that way you wouldn't need to have two depositions potentially of a defendant corporate representative if there is new uh, information discovered during the plaintiff's deposition that would have that the defendant then has to respond to and then take a second deposition so uh, and, and as i understand it the sequencing of discovery is within the court's discretion based upon the facts and circumstances of the of the individual case so based on the facts and circumstances of this case I would find that the plaintiff's deposition should go before the defendant's corporate representative. You said you all were both agreeable to having them be within a certain number of days of each other. Uh, I'm happy to include that specific finding so that we don't have a plaintiff going very far ahead of the defendant. Uh, I, I do think that I know the corporate representatives take longer usually to get scheduled. So what time frame are you agreeable to between the plaintiff and the defendant, Ms. Hickson? I would just ask for a week so that we're sure everybody has um, the ability to get the deposition scheduled. Any objection to that? No, Your Honor. All right. So the plaintiff will be before the defendant corporate representative and it will be within one week of each other. And then I, I think you also want the a finding regarding the field adjuster being after the plaintiff, Ms. Hickson? I think that that one is already scheduled and it is scheduled in November. So I don't need to worry about the field adjuster. You really just care about the corporate rep. Yeah, I think the field adjuster's testimony kind of stands on its own. So I'm not as concerned with that one. Well, and it's your motion. So if you're not concerned about it, then <laughs> I'm not concerned about it. Okay. <laughs> so to summarize, because there are technically two motions pending, uh, which I've kind of heard together. The, I don't know that we're really dealing with the protective order at all at this point. No. Yeah. Yeah. The, tech, the protective order was just about pushing it out further, right? Yes. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to say that motion for protective order is moot. I don't think there's really anything I'm arguing on that one or we're deciding on that one, but that the motion to determine sequencing is granted to set the, de the sequencing to be the plaintiff before the defendant corporate representative. They'll be within one week of each other. I think that's it. You all have agreed to the time period being the end of prior to the end of November. That is correct, Your Honor. 
Is that well? I guess I could say that that's part of the protective order because the protective order was to agree to reschedule it. So I guess the protective order could be granted in accordance with your agreement to have them reschedule to occur prior to the end of November. Is that what's your preference, Ms. Hickson? That's fine, Your Honor. Any, any objection to that, Ms. Plancher? No, Your Honor. Okay, so the motion for protective order is granted in accordance with your agreement. The motion to determine sequence is granted as I've announced it. And then I think that's everything. Was there anything else in either of your motion, Ms. Hickson, that I either haven't addressed or that you want me to clarify? No, Your Honor, I think that's everything. Ms. Planchard, any other issues? No? No, Your Honor. All right, so I am a magistrate. There's a 10 day exception period that applies unless waived. Do you want to preserve that, waive that, or wait and see if you can agree upon a report and recommendation, Ms. Planchard? Um, I have no problem in waiving, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Hickson, would you like to waive as well? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so I will ask Ms. Hickson to submit the report and recommendation since I did rule in your favor with regard to the sequencing. You can go ahead and combine it all into one report. Okay. For, for both of the motions, that includes your agreement as well as the uh, sequencing with the waiver of exceptions. So it can all be addressed by the Judge Schenko at the same time by adopting my report. I have a template report and recommendation that's available on the Magistrate Downloads webpage. Have I gone through that process with you before, Ms. Hickson? No, you have not. Okay, so if you Google 20th Circuit Magistrate Downloads, there's a template available as well as instructions on how to submit that to my office, either by email with a word attachment or through the portal as a proposed report and recommendation. I ask that you circulate it to opposing counsel before submitting it to my office. Let me know if you reach an agreement as to the wording. If you don't reach an agreement, please let me know what the disputes are. All of that set forth in the, there's like a guidelines document at that magistrate downloads webpage. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to my assistant, Adela, who can help you in that regard. And I believe that's gonna be all for today. I hope you all have a wonderful day. You're welcome to leave the meeting. And I, uh, I, I still see your empty chair there from your office. I, I guess I should clarify, we could see your office. We just, I was confused because I didn't see your person there, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I thought it through real well when they set up the remote desktop that it was gonna be showing my office in Fort Myers and I'm working from home today, so. <laughs> yeah, lessons learned. Uh, I yeah. hope you have a great day. Thank you, for, thank you so much, take care. Thank you. Thank All right, so we're going to move on to, well, actually, we're ahead of schedule for 10.45. Yeah, absolutely. Somebody in the waiting room, but it's really early, and since we only have the one. Right. Um, I see we have another uh, family law magistrate, huh? Yeah, Mr. Whitney yeah. just started Tuesday. Oh, great. We're showing him around the office and how not to get lost in the hallways, which took me a couple of weeks to figure out how. how yeah, to get when, you, when you're new. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, we're excited to have to have all of our offices filled for the time being. Right. Yep. All right. Well, I'm gonna any, go back. To any news from the governor? Yeah. No, I don't even have yeah. a date yet for the interview. I know he's been oh. signing legislation and working on the budget and vetoes and whatnot, but I did see that he approved the budget that included the funding for the ninth county seat. So, okay. So there will be not only Judge Adams' seat that's being filled, but the new seat that will be filled. Uh, I'm not sure how quickly the JNC is going to do that and if they're going to have a separate lit. I assume there will be a separate process on that with a separate list but <laughs> then after that <clears throat> that interview then the, there would be a short list another interview or that how they do well, so the way it works